Dubai is a tiny sheikdom nestled along the Persian Gulf on the eastern edge of the Arabian Peninsula and part of a tiny oil-rich country called the United Arab Emirates. Over the course of just a few decades, it's transformed itself from a spit of sand about the size of Rhode Island into the Singapore of the Middle East. It's a political, economic, and financial success story in a region torn by conflict. And as we first reported last October, it's all the vision of one man, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He rarely gives interviews, but you're about to meet him and get his tour of one of the fastest growing places on earth. No matter how many articles you read or how many pictures you see, they don't quite capture the enormity and the energy of Dubai. It is a physical manifestation of Arab oil wealth set in concrete, glass, and steel, a place so rich and ambitious that it is changing the geography of the world as a business center, transportation hub, and tourist destination. A 21st century city at the crossroads of a new world. Skyscrapers rise in clusters, man-made islands rise from the sea, and entire neighborhoods with hundreds of office buildings and apartments rise from the sand. And it is all the vision of one man, Sheikh Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum. This is where we're standing now. All this is nothing. 2000, 2000. 2000. January 2000. Seven what, years what, ago. Yes. This was desert. And look now, all what you see. What you see has been called the largest construction site on earth, with a half a million laborers working on a reported $300 billion worth of projects, building Sheikh Muhammad's dream of a modern, efficient, and tolerant Arab city with fine restaurants and a vibrant nightlife, both the playground and the business capital of a new Middle East. What are you trying to do here? What do you want this place to be? I want it to be number one. Not in the region, but in the world. What do you mean, number one in the world? In everything. High education, health, uh, housing. Just making my people the highest way of living. At 59 years old, he is one of the richest people in the world, a member of the Maktoum family, which has ruled here for nearly two centuries. He's a former Air Force pilot and an avid horseman who competes in cross-country endurance races and is one of the largest breeders of thoroughbred racehorses in the world. By Western standards, his marital situation is a little complicated. He's married to Princess Hayat, the daughter of the late King Hussein of Jordan, but he also has another wife who is rarely seen in public. He is frequently described as a workaholic, and as we found one morning, always in motion. I'm just doing my normal thing, which is, you know... You like to stay on your feet? Yeah. <laughs> Where's your security detail? I don't have a security. You just walk place. around by yourself? Yeah. He's famous for dropping in unannounced at construction sites and government offices to see how things are going. We'll get in this car, huh? This is my car. All right, fine. I will drive. Okay. He uses his cars as mobile offices. So you travel by yourself all the time? Most of the time I travel myself, yes. It seemed like almost everyone in Dubai knew the car and who was driving. Uh, then, done. But you see the whole area is going uh, growing here. There is a little bit of Donald Trump in it, at least when it comes to showmanship. You know this building up there? That strange looking building on the left is one of the world's tallest indoor ski slopes. Outside it may be 120, but inside it feels like the Alps. And they are set and ready to run. Then there is the Dubai World Cup, showcasing the fastest horses in the world, running for the world's largest purse. Not to mention the most luxurious and expensive hotel in the world, the Burj Al Arab, where the cheapest room is $2,000 a night. Why do you want everything to be the biggest, the tallest? Steve, why not? Why not? If you can have it in New York, what can we have it here? Why are you in such a hurry? Most people would try and do all of this in a lifetime, not in five years. I want, I want my people to live a better life now, to go to the high school now, to go to the good uh, health care now, not after 20 years. His people, the descendants of Bedouin tribesmen, pearl divers, and traders, now make up a small fraction of the population here. 
they enjoy one of the highest standards of living in the world, with free health care and college tuition and no taxes. Business consultants told him the project was unfeasible, but with no environmental regulations to stop him, Sultan began dredging 100 million cubic yards of sand from the Persian Gulf, along with 7 million tons of rock to form a man-made island in the shape of a palm. It more than doubled the coastline of Dubai and created waterfront condos and homes for 150,000 people, not including 35 hotels. Most people, if they brought in a business consultant and they told them this is a terrible idea, it's not going to work, they wouldn't do it. Most people, yes, but not us. What's the country's reputation in the rest of the Arab world? Remember, we have 300 million people live in this region. 86% of the youth being questioned, they say they want to come to Dubai. Their destination number one is not London, it's not New York, as used to be in the old days, or France, it is Dubai. What do you think of Sheikh Mohammed? He's great. He's a beginner. But his ambition without any limits. Ambition with no limits. Uh, yeah. Professor Al Kitbi warns that the Sheikh's ambition could have some consequences. <laughs> but for the time being, business is still booming. What do you do when you're not the ruler of Dubai? What gives you happiness and pleasure? Uh, I'll be riding my horses. You love horses? I love horses. I love animals. He owns one of the world's top breeding and thoroughbred racing operations. The morning we were there, he was selecting horses for races all over the world. And some of the world's most expensive thoroughbreds were on display. Look, here they come into the finish. So, the one with the colors, I told you he won. Yeah. These are the best, the best horses in the world. What is it you love so much about this? Uh, it's my hobby. It's, you know, the horse in my blood. Frankie, how is that finished? Fabulous. Like the grass stretched out really well. Of the horses that we've seen today, what are they worth? Each one of these, if you win, what we think you win, will be worth 50, 60 million dollar. There was one horse in particular that the Sheikh was interested in. If you look, they are there. Mm -hmm. Now they're building up. I expect this to pass this, otherwise I'd be disappointed. And this day he was not disappointed. No one likes to disappoint the Sheikh, not even his horses. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see.